Hey guys, welcome to Harry Barry's room. We are right in the middle of, well I shouldn't call it in the middle, we're at the end of finishing off. It's a bit hot in here, we've got the little bathroom heater going on in this room and the doors, what remains of our doors closed. We've been removing a lot of them. So previous videos, cutting out all of this bulkhead a bit bigger. We put in the forward part of Harry's bunk. This video we're going to put in this aft section of his bunk and the, um, oh, what do you call it, the bulkhead down below. Uh, yeah, a lot of edge capping and finishing needs to happen, so there's that going on. And I have been asked a bit about whether you can make your boat too light. Um, so I hit Shane up about it. It's a really interesting discussion that goes on, so stick around and I uh, hope you enjoy it. How's it going, sir? Stinks a lot. Yeah. All right. It's currently doing all the tabbing in here. Looking good. We can see how much fun Dad's having in here in his little uh little space. Oh, man kid. Still need to do some tabbing on the top though. That should be good. There it is. Beautiful. So you can see that he's left the sides of the bulkhead unlaminated because that's going to go straight onto the sides of the hull and laminated on there. Yeah, it looks pretty good after he's given it a bit of a sand up. So next step is to glue it in and it's going under this bed here. So a lot of people have been asking about weight on Pikea. According to Lock Crowther design, Katana 42 should weigh around 7 tonne out of the um, factory. So that's light ship. Sounds like this boat definitely never was that light. And we don't know how light it was when we bought it, but we took it out when we did the refit of the, um, the front longeron and front beam and the new mast, and it weighed a little over eight ton. And we've taken a bit of a fair bit of weight off of it since then. So yeah, we're sitting around eight, we think. We know that we can get at least a hundred kilos out of the floor by replacing all the timber floors with composite and then the idea is that we'll also replace all the timber furniture with composite so we don't actually know how much we're going to save weight wise but we're just weighing it as we go so that we can have a, a bit of an idea did you weigh the original bulkhead yep how much was that i can't remember <laughs> maybe i'll put that just there I 
How much do you reckon that bulkhead weighs? I haven't even held it, so I don't know. Oh, it's light. Um, is it more than a kilo? Just. 1.45. Yeah, it's pretty light. Nice. Can you go too light, Shane, with your boat? With the boat? Mm. Not with the boat. With components of the boat, you can be too light because they'll break. Yeah, but like if a designer has designed it to be, say this boat was designed to be seven ton and we make it... Two ton, <laughs> you know, for extreme yeah. comparison. That, that's, that will be a problem, right? No. Wait, 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 wait. So you're saying that we could make our boat two ton and it would be fine? Yes, yeah, if we could structurally make it sound and make it two ton, It'd be a bloody awesome thing. Uh, no, oh, but there, there is—you can't take too much weight out of the boat, right? No, no. Is no is a simple answer. Uh, and why is that the case? Well, everyone will think, ah, but then your boat will fall over real easy. Well, no, it won't. You just take the sails down. You know, it's it's <laughs> it's not it's not a very difficult equation. That's why we got sails that we can reef and make smaller because as the wind picks up, it gives us that wind range to work through. By having a heavier boat, we need a higher wind range in order to make the boat operate better. Uh, with a light boat, we can operate in the lower wind ranges, and when we get into the higher wind ranges, we just take sail area away. You do get into a situation, like we have been in a lot of race boats, where they are, you know, really stupidly light, uh, where you can be just with a bare mast and overpowered and you can't take any more sail down. You can get into that situation and that is very uncomfortable um, and, it, and it's very un unnerving. So that's probably the um, situation that could happen. But with the race boats, you don't have the same diversity in your boat setup that you do with like this cruising boat. You have the option to fill up heaps of tanks and things like that. Um, there was a case she was very first offshore boat I ever race was a little 40 footer that weighed 1.2 ton you know that's a very light boat to take offshore and we got into the situation where we were bare poles and we ran out of options and this is when i first learned about um drogues and uh, dragging stuff out the back of the boat um there's a lot there's a lot of techniques and skills that you can use to settle it all down but one of the things that actually happened during that as well, we hit a big log, a uh, split centerboard case in the boat, one of the hulls half filled with water, and that made the boat five times heavier than it was before. And as soon as that happened, we were actually, we didn't know that that had happened, but the boat had got ha heavier, got a little bit less sketchy and flighty, and now all of a sudden we've got a headsail out the front. So I was like, oh, that's a good lesson. Um, that you can actually just weigh your boat down. It's easier to weigh your boat down than it is to make it light. And to have things like tankage and all the rest of it is a much easier, again, adaptability, like reefing your sails, if you need to make your boat a bit heavier, it's really easy to make your boat heavy. So what we're doing now, where we're taking out all the weight on the floors and the furniture and all the rest, as long as we're making sure that, the, that it keeps its structural integrity, yeah, 100%. No, everything that's going back in is equally as strong or stronger. Nothing I'm putting back in is less strong. The number one reason that we're making our boat lighter, one, is to improve the performance, but it's also to improve the port performance with a better payload carrying capacity. So let's say we, we take the arbitrary seven ton number and we say, okay, seven ton was the theoretical light ship number we weighed this boat when we pulled it out in valencia many years ago and the boat was at 8.8 .8 ton so technically we're carrying 1.8 nearly two tons of gear on board the boat which is not too difficult so that means that we now have a nine ton sailing boat if we built or get the boat light ship down to five ton carrying two ton of gear or 1.8 ton of gear now we're actually sailing at our light ship design number uh, which is a big big
big difference and, and have that performance of a seven ton light ship boat. That's what it's all about. It's having what you define as an acceptable sailing weight and the boat's originally designed at a certain weight to be on a certain waterline and wing deck clearances and wave interactions and everything to work at a certain weight. And if you go and pile weight in on top of what that designed weight was, it's always going to be underperforming. It's always going to not respond right, blah, 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 blah. But if you can build the boat really light and increase your payload capacity so you can carry the... the kitchen sink. The kitchen sink, the kitchen aid, the cooker, the... Yeah. So this is the thing with a, a, cr a performance cruising boat is... It will perform not like a racing boat because it will never be a racing boat unless you take all that crap out is that you can still put the stuff in the boat but it doesn't deteriorate the sailing performance so that it feels like a floating condo there's no airflow or anything in that little space he's in. 